So King of the Hill is supposedly coming back it, at some point. I've been hearing rumors of that for like five years now, but supposedly the show can now be considered in development. So what better way to hype ourselves up than by looking back at the series through the lens of an iceberg? And since I've done quite a few iceberg videos on the channel at this point, I figure I can probably keep the description of what exactly an iceberg video is pretty brief. I'm going to go through each point from top to bottom and discuss each of them. The top are more well-known theories or facts, and as you go further down into the dark unknown, things start to get a bit weirder and sometimes more abstract. And as always, there might be some spoilers ahead, but I mean, the show's been canceled for like a decade now, so it might be a little hard to spoil it. And hey, while we're here, comment down below what you'd like to hear me talk about next, and make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Luann's Name Origin If you've watched King of the Hill at all, even the slightest bit, you would have noticed a character named Luann. She's kind of a major character in the series. But what about her name, Luann Platter? That's kind of a weird-ish name, right? I mean, I'm sure there's at least a couple Luann Platters out there, but in a show where at least semi-realism is the name of the game, her name sticks out kind of like a sore thumb. So how did the writers come up with her name in particular? Well, it's quite simple actually. She's named after a meal at a Texas-based restaurant, the Lou Ann Platter from Luby's in particular. A value meal that comes with a select entree, two sides, and a roll. All for the great price of $7.99. I, I, I promise this video wasn't sponsored by Luby's. Finale Out of Order The finale of King of the Hill is one of very subtle beauty. After years of the two trying to find common ground, Bobby and Hank come together as father and son on truly equal footing for the first time. It's not that there wasn't an effort on both sides, but this is the first real time that the two of them are fully on the same page about something. Cooking Steak It's really nice seeing the father and son grow their bond over cooking steaks, and I think that's a fantastic way to send the series out. Except that's not the final episode that aired. Four other episodes followed several months later, which kind of takes the wind out of the sails that the finale had managed to gather. The final episode to actually air being just another manic con day, which to be fair does end with Hank and Con bonding, but it's not nearly as powerful as what the actual finale was supposed to be. Dusty Hill Dusty Hill was Hank's first cousin. Dusty's father was Hank's father's brother. And probably much more importantly, Dusty was well known as the bassist for legendary rock slash blues band ZZ Top. We see in the episode Hank gets dusted their dynamic, and how Dusty and the rest of the band used to prank Hank during their youth. My personal favorite being when they got a bunch of women to just kind of rub up against him. Anyway, in the episode we see Cotton leave his car to Dusty instead of Hank, and Dusty ends up entering the car into a demolition derby. Joseph Design Change Joseph Gribble is Bobby's best friend and definitely 100% Dale's son. In Season 5, Episode 3, uh, I'm not going to even try to say that episode title, Joseph goes away for the summer and comes back having gone through puberty. He's radically grown and his demeanor has changed as well. But why do they decide to give him this huge character design in the fifth season of the show? Well, there's no definitive answer as far as I was able to find. If you do know the definitive answer, please comment it down below. But there are a few different ideas as to why they may have made the change. First, it drastically changes the dynamic between Bobby and Joseph. After hitting puberty, Joseph seems like a different character. This gives the writers a chance to do different kinds of stories without needing to introduce a new character. Joseph can be that awkward kid who's into girls and Bobby can still be Bobby. Bobby doesn't change throughout the series because having him grow up and seem more masculine would challenge the dynamic of him not being the traditional version of masculinity that Hank would want him to be. It would essentially destroy that dynamic, and honestly, that's a huge part of what makes the show the show. King of the Hill PC Game So for a show as popular as King of the Hill, you'd expect them to take advantage of different forms of media for the show to exist in. Look at Avatar The Last Airbender. There's comics, sequel shows, books, and, most importantly, video games. No! King of the Hill is no exception. They did, of course, come out with a video game. And hot damn is that game not very good. I mean, it just kind of makes sense that the game wouldn't be great, right? 
The show itself is definitely based in reality, and a game like that probably isn't going to do anything too great. It's mostly just a collection of minigames, including a hunting game. The games are meticulously scheduled out, and you actually have to wait for these games to start, which is already a terrible way for a game to start. It got generally pretty bad reviews, and I think it's actually considered abandonware at this point, so go download it, I guess, if you want to play a pretty boring game. The family prefers charcoal. Taste the meat, not the heat, may as well be the Hill family slogan. It's certainly something that Hank, if no one else, absolutely lives by. His devotion to not just propane, but also to propane accessories is something that most people could only begin to fathom. But what about the rest of the family? What if they actually preferred charcoal? Well, they actually might. This man is overgasped! In the episode Hank in the Great Glass Elevator, the family finds out that the burgers that Luann cooked and that they loved were cooked using charcoal. In fact, Hank even ends up finding a bit of charcoal in the house and has to confront the family. Peggy has to basically lie to Hank, saying that she prefers propane cooked burgers, and Bobby just straight up says that he likes the rich, smoky flavor. Hank doesn't take it super well. Shut your mouth. Now, we're gonna sit here and pray. Boomhauer Voice Origin Boomhauer's voice is one of the most iconic ongoing jokes from King of the Hill. He goes from absolutely incomprehensible to vaguely comprehensible at various times throughout the show's run. But where did this weird way of speaking come from? Well, it turns out, once again, it's actually based on a real person. Mike Judge revealed in an interview with Jimmy Kimmel that he got a voicemail during his time on Beavis and Butthead, or as the voicemail guy apparently thought it was called, Porky's Butthole, and the guy had a super thick accent that was incredibly reminiscent of what would eventually become Boomhauer's voice. Judge even joking that most of the voicemail was basically incomprehensible, which sounds about right for what we know the voice would become. Silver Surfer so there was a time where the Silver Surfer was weirdly popular, in the late 90s, early 2000s. He even had his own show that aired on Fox, and that's where this really weird crossover came from. The strongest man in the universe actually got to meet the Silver Surfer. This was a promo for the Fox Kids Silver Surfer animated series that ran for 13 episodes. In the promo, Hank offers to retool the Silver Surfer's board to run off of propane as an alternative energy source, because he's the hill's new neighbor, and it ends with Hank saying that he might actually be able to supply propane galaxy-wide, which would definitely be a good get for Hank's bottom line. This whole promo just reeks of that weird early aughts type of promo, and I kinda love it for that. Bill is Bobby's real father. Bobby and Hank are really nothing alike. That's not exactly a controversial take of King of the Hill, and this theory tries to put forward a reason why that may be, Hank and Bobby aren't anything alike because Hank isn't actually Bobby's father. Bill is. I'll give some evidence and support first and then some evidence against it. For starters, with Hank's narrow urethra, he and Peggy were told they'd very likely never have children. There's how Bobby looks more like Bill than he does Hank. There's Bill's very obvious crush on Peggy seen throughout the series. We see Peggy admit once that she's only ever slept with Hank and one other person, and there's Bill's passing down of Dotree family recipes to Bobby for some reason. Similar to what John Redcorn does with Joseph. And the John Redcorn, Joseph, and Dale dynamic could be essentially what's happening with Bill, Bobby, and Hank. Bobby and Hank being unaware of Bill being Bobby's father, and Bill trying to pass stuff down to his only son. But to be honest, I don't really buy it. There's a bunch of evidence against this as well. Bobby looks almost exactly like Hank's father, Cotton. Peggy can't stand Bill. It could be because of an affair, or it could be that she just doesn't like Bill for a ton of other reasons. And honestly, Bill is probably just passing stuff down to Bobby because he doesn't have any kids, and Bobby is one of the few people who's pretty tolerant of Bill. Dale knows about the affair. As we've touched on a few times, Dale's wife, Nancy, engages in an affair with John Redcord for a solid portion of the show. And despite his child looking absolutely nothing like him, Dale is blissfully unaware of everything that's going on behind his back. Or is he? Does Dale actually know everything and he's just kind of playing along? Let's look at a couple theories and reasons why some people think he could know everything. 
We know that Dale monitors every single incoming call to the home, so surely he would have heard something from John Redcorn at some point. But to be fair, it's very likely that Nancy would know about Dale's phone monitoring and would take steps to avoid being caught in that way. On another occasion, Dale just straight up catches John Redcorn sneaking into his house to do the horizontal monster mash with Nancy. But if Dale knew, the next logical question just sort of comes down to, why wouldn't he say or do anything about it? There's a couple different theories as to why Dale is staying silent on this. First is that Dale has basically the perfect life. His wife makes solid money from her job at the television studio. She pays the bill and that allows Dale to run his own business and be his own boss. And even if Joseph isn't his biological son, Dale does have a very healthy relationship with Joseph. Regardless of who his father is, Dale did raise Joseph as his own and likely wouldn't want to jeopardize that relationship. And he just has to look down the street to see a man whose life was absolutely ruined by divorce. Bill. Dale could certainly be afraid of ending up in a similar situation. It's also possible that Dale is playing the long game. He's engaging in psychological warfare with John Redcorn, something that doesn't really seem too out of character for Dale. He may be being overly nice to John Redcorn and bonding with Joseph in front of him as a way to really rub their relationship in his face. Hank uses charcoal in animation error. We've already talked about Hank's absolute love of both propane and propane accessories, but it turns out Hank has actually used charcoal in the series at one point. In the season three episode, Hank's Cowboy Movie, we see Hank using a charcoal grill in a home movie. This is obviously an animation error, but it's probably the most grievous animation error that has ever existed. It spits in the face of everything we know or thought we knew about the man Hank Hill was. Two, Peggy's Mothers. So Peggy's mother is someone whose character has undergone a drastic change in the series. And by a drastic change, I mean they completely retconned her character into someone completely different. When we see Maddie Platter in season one, she looks pretty similar to an older Peggy. But then when we see her later on, she looks completely different and has a much more abrasive personality. This was likely done because the writers had an idea for the story and the version of Peggy's mother who hadn't shown up for the bulk of the series just didn't fit. So they reworked a basically forgotten character. And to be fair, the new version of Peggy's mother is good insight into Peggy's narcissism and that's probably why they changed her. Harlot Town. Harlot Town was apparently the original name for Arlen, the town where the show takes place. According to Peggy, Arlen, then Harlot Town, was established along the Chrisholm Trail. This route is only approximately 70 miles long inside of Texas, from Fort Worth to the Red River, which is the border to Oklahoma. That actually gives us the most concrete evidence we get as to where Arlen is located, somewhere along this trail. It also gives us some clues as to what Arlen was originally like, a, a town full of prostitutes. Luann is a good mechanic. Luann is an interesting character in her time throughout the series, but one of the most forgotten traits that she displays is her incredible talent as a mechanic. It's something that's mostly just in the background of episodes and not typically a focus, but we've seen her fix several vehicles, or at least attempt to, throughout the show's run, including taking apart and putting back together Hank's truck's engine, fixing it along the way, trying to fix Bill's car, and is even able to diagnose what's wrong with Cotton's sabotaged car just by hearing it attempt to start. It's definitely at least a little weird that she didn't follow her skills into this field, but if it's not what she enjoyed, that's probably for the best. Bobby is Dalai Lama. So this is a weird one. In one episode, Bobby is recognized as the reincarnated Lama or spiritual master by a group of Buddhists. Bobby is selected as the reincarnation after he is apparently drawn to the object that the previous Lama had possessed, though he does still have to take one more test where he, again, has to pick out an object. And strangely, despite apparently picking the wrong object, Bobby does actually use the mirror that's the correct object. He sees Connie in it and decides after that what item he wants to pick. One of the monks even comments on that very fact at the end of the episode, and they just kind of say, eh. Maybe. So anyways, Bobby might canonically be the reincarnation of a Buddhist Lama. Junichiro appears two times. Junichiro is Cotton's illegitimate son and Hank's half-brother who was born, raised, and lives in Japan. 
Junichiro and Hank, despite not meeting until well into their adult lives, are incredibly similar people. From their Whoa! to their narrow urethras, the brothers have a lot in common. And coincidentally, Junichiro in Japanese is a male given name meeting genuine first son. So Junichiro shows up in the returning Japanese episodes, and then we don't ever see or hear from him again. I mean, that makes sense considering the show takes place in Texas and Junichiro lives in Japan. Except that we do see him just one more time in the series. He actually shows up in the background of Luann's wedding, which is actually pretty sweet. He flew across the world to be at his niece's wedding. Monsignor Martinez Live Action Spinoff Monsignor Martinez is the main character of an in-universe show about a Spanish Catholic priest who is a mercenary and is often caught in action while at church. It certainly sounds like it could have made for a fun show in and of itself. And that's what some other people thought too. In fact, a live action spinoff for Monsignor Martinez was shot and does exist. While the show didn't end up getting picked up by Fox and never officially aired, the pilot itself has actually resurfaced in recent years. In 2019, a Redditor claimed to have three VHS copies of the pilot and that they were working on a documentary and would eventually release that. As far as I'm aware, no such documentary has ever been released. Then on July 6th, a YouTube user uploaded the pilot under this title. The pilot appears to be complete and comes out to 18 minutes and 23 seconds long. Aside from some audio mixing stuff, the pilot is complete and seems to be ready to air. I'll put a link down in that description if you want to check it out after this video and after you subscribe and after you watch everything else on this channel, of course. Boomhauer's son. So we know that Boomhauer isn't married and he certainly gets around a good bit. So this theory puts forward that one of the students in Bobby's class might actually be Boomhauer's illegitimate son. He certainly looks like he could be a younger version of Boomhauer. He has the same general expression and flowing blonde hair, but Garth, the boy, only shows up a handful of times, never has any speaking lines, and then disappears. It's definitely up to the viewer's imagination on this one. But to take the theory even a step further, there's actually a good bit of younger characters who look suspiciously similar to Boomhauer. So maybe he's gotten around even more than we thought. House layout changes. The Hill House is a setting that a lot of the show takes place in. But what's weird is that the show itself seems to shift and change layouts as the series goes on. It's certainly something that's been brought up a lot in comments on another video of mine, but the series really just isn't super consistent when it comes to that. Sometimes it even just kind of changes throughout an episode itself. I mean, look at this. It changes just 11 minutes into the episode. Where does that window come from? It wasn't there earlier in the episode. Most of the time, Bobby's room is to the right of the front door, but his window faces Connie's. It would need to be attached to the kitchen for that to happen. What about Hank's den? Where is that supposed to be? The house's layout is just something that the writers shape based on what stories they want to tell. And honestly, that's probably not the worst thing they could be doing. It's not like they're giving the hills anything outrageous, just a few extra rooms here and there. Hal is Hank's brother. Hal, this one, not Hal Dumpty, is a character who shows up in just one episode. Season 4 is not in my back hoe. He's a character who has a lot of things in common with Hank, including how similar they look, and the two of them become very fast friends. This theory puts forward that the two of them are so similar because Hal is actually Hank's half-brother. I mean, it's a concept that we do see in the show with Hank's half-brother, Jinichiro. Would it be insane that Khan also fathered another child closer to where they lived? And I mean, the most ironclad evidence is obviously that Hal and Hank are kind of similar names. Checkmate. Boomhauer is spying on Dale. Boomhauer is, as we've hinted at a few times throughout this video, a pretty interesting guy. For the vast, vast majority of the series, what Boomhauer actually does for a living is something of a mystery. Which is strange for a show that ran for as long as it did. We have all of the other characters regularly talking about work, but with Boomhauer, it just kind of never comes up. But then, in the series finale, that wasn't the last episode to air, we finally get confirmation as to what Boomhauer actually does for a living. He's a Texas Ranger. Like, a cop, not a baseball player. But why was this such a secretive thing in the show? Well, this theory puts forward that Boomhauer is actually deep undercover with the express purpose of spying on Dale. We know that Dale holds some pretty deep-seated resentment of the government. He's been part of at least one militia and has contacts with some pretty sketchy guys. 
this Reddit post actually lays it out very well. With how the neighborhood is set up, Boomhauer would even be able to quietly keep an eye on Dale's antic from the comforts of his own backyard. Now, I know what everyone's thinking, but they grew up together. That actually might work in favor of the theory. With someone as suspicious of everything as Dale, you need to get someone on the inside who he wouldn't suspect. Boomhauer is the perfect candidate for that. But Boomhauer knows Dale, and is kind of working under the assumption that despite all his big talk, Dale really wouldn't ever do anything that would require actually being taken down. This is, I'm assuming, a reference to a really weird AMV on good old YouTube. If you're not sure what an AMV is, well, back in the day, people used to edit anime to different songs, trying to get different emotions out of people. The most popular probably being clips of Naruto and Linkin Park songs. I mean, this one has 55 million views. In fact, some friends and I have actually played a game where we pick a random artist in anime to see if we can find something. You usually can. This specific AMV features Bill Dotrieve and Akito Soma from Fruits Basket, together with the song Puppet on a String by Nick Gibson. It's definitely a strange combination of properties, and according to the video's description, someone actually even requested this one. Is it a meme? Is it pure art? That's up for you to decide. As for me, I like to think of this video as the perfect time capsule for what YouTube once was. Peggy's Brain Damage so, in the season 3 finale of King of the Hill, Peggy goes skydiving and after an accident, she plummets and hits the ground hard. This theory puts forward that this fall and the injury she receives from it gave her some significant brain damage and changed her personality a bit. After this point, her narcissism becomes more and more prevalent in the series. In the first three seasons, she's friendly and occasionally has some ego problems. But from season 4 onward, she's less sympathetic, and her ego becomes basically her defining trait. It's also possible the fall may have made her forget any Spanish she may have known. Bill Wedding Cake Scene The Bill Wedding Cake Scene is a very short scene that was actually cut from the series finale. And just reading the script of the scene that was cut, it feels like an absolute crime the scene didn't make it to air. I'll read through the scene really quickly because it's only just a couple sentences. Interior. Bill's house. Kitchen. Bill looks through his freezer. He pulls out a package marked wedding cake and sets it on the table. Bill unwraps the white frostbitten cake and looks at it forlornly. Then he sniffs the air. He considers, then throws the cake away. This really quick scene would have happened right after we find out that Boomhauer was the Texas Ranger. It would essentially function to show that, for the first time since the divorce, Bill has finally, finally found some closure. And I think that the scene would have done a lot for his character, and I do wish that we could have seen it. Willie Lane Foreshadowed Willie Lane is a character who shows up and is kind of a dick for an episode before punching Hank and getting blackmailed into leaving the neighborhood for good. He's a pretty forgettable character in terms of the series, and his notable traits are that he played in the NFL and he's a dick. But despite appearing in just one episode, Willie Lane is actually foreshadowed a season prior to his actual appearance in the show. In the season 7 episode, I Never Promised You an Organic Garden, when Hank is watching TV, we get an image of Willie Lane. But what's really weird is that despite his number being 64, he's listed as a quarterback for some reason. For non-football people, quarterbacks actually can't be that number. In fact, they can only be numbers 1 through 20. The number 64 would imply that he was some kind of lineman, which lines more up with him blocking a field goal in the Super Bowl. Ladybird Replacement when the Hills go to Japan, they leave Luann back in Arlen and she takes care of Ladybird, the Hill family dog. And while Luann is in Arlen, she thinks that Ladybird has actually died. So she does the most responsible thing she can think of. She gets the family a replacement dog, removes Ladybird's collar, and prepares to pass her off as the real Ladybird. But then the real Ladybird wakes up. She's not actually dead, it turns out. And while the two dogs are running around together, Luann loses track of which dog is the real Ladybird. So it certainly seems possible that the dog Luann decided was the real Ladybird was the fake one. That might actually explain a couple things. Why Ladybird lives as long as she does, and why she bites Hank. But I mean, come on. If anyone would be able to tell if Ladybird wasn't the real Ladybird, it would be Hank. Missing Song 
So for a while, there was a bit of a mystery in King of the Hill. There were a couple of songs in the season 13 episode, The Boy Can't Help It, that were for a long time completely unidentified. People searched for a long time, even going as far as really cleaning up the audio in the episode so they could hear just the song. And finally, within the last few years, the songs have actually been found and linked to their artists. The songs in question being Veterans of Foreign Film and Between Shadows and Silhouettes by Measure. The band's bandcamp actually even confirming that their music was the missing songs in the episode for a long time. I'll link their music down in the description. Luann blew up the Megalomart. In the season 2 episode Propane Boom, a huge propane explosion destroys the Megalomart and actually ends up killing Buckley, Luann's on-again, off-again boyfriend. The explosion is propane related and seems to be because Buckley, despite Hank's warning, handles the propane tanks inappropriately. But this theory suggests that it might not have actually been Buckley's fault, that Luann might have actually rigged the whole thing up to explode. We have actually seen Luann showing something of a destructive streak throughout the show's run, like flushing Peggy's keys and putting Peggy's shoes and glasses down the garbage disposal. But I mean, this would obviously be a huge step up in terms of destruction. And I personally think that even if she meant to blow the place up, she didn't want anyone, especially Buckley, to be hurt or killed. She would hold some extreme guilt over this. That's why she later sees Buckley as an angel. But the question eventually comes down to, why? Well, she was simply upset that Hank was hired at the Megalomart instead of her. Cotton faked his death and Cotton and Topsy killed roommate. So these two are being combined because they kind of inform each other a little bit. In the season 12 episode, Death Picks Cotton, Hank's father, Cotton, dies suddenly after choking on shrimp and getting burned on a grill while having a PTSD flashback. This theory puts forward that Cotton didn't actually die, he just decided to fake his death. But why? Why would Cotton leave behind his wife in Good Hank? Well, in an earlier episode, Cotton and Topsy, one of Cotton's old war buddies, are called the bad guys in World War II by a man and the two force their way into his house. It's never specifically stated what exactly happens here, but with the changing lighting and ominous music, it's certainly not out of the realm of possibility that Cotton and Topsy murdered the man and just about everyone else in the house. I mean, Cotton already killed 50 men. Yeah, that was in a war, but Cotton is extremely proud of that fact. So let's say that Cotton and Topsy murdered a couple of guys. There would obviously be a police investigation. If the cops are closing in on Cotton, he might have only seen one way out to fake his death until the heat dies down. And that's where we'll end this iceberg for now. There's a lot more on this list and I'm more than likely going to do a part two for this video if it does well, where we'll cover some more stuff on this list and maybe a couple of other things. If you like this video, comment down below what you'd like to hear me talk about next. Follow me on Twitter at 10kbuild to stay up to date on everything I'm working on. Support us on our Patreon if you like this content and want to see more like it. And of course, make sure you subscribe for all your entertainment related content.